Hey, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great. Been hanging out here in my little grow space, cleaning up my Christmas cactus or Thanksgiving cactus, holiday cactus, whatever you want to call them. I have these two beauties right here that are just blooming. This one right here is all the way opened up. The one next to it still kind of working on things a little bit. And while I was in the process of cleaning these up, I remembered I've had a frequently asked question with these plants and I haven't really talked about it before. So real quick, let's go ahead and talk about bud drop. Seems to be a uh, common problem. I've had a Thanksgiving cactus video out for a few years now. A lot of the questions have been, why is mine dropping its buds? It's usually always the same scenario. It's people saying, hey, I just bought this, brought it home a few days later the buds are starting to kind of yellow and get weak or brown and just sort of shrivel up and die and fall off the plant. So what gives? Why? Is there anything that can be done about it? Unfortunately, the answer is no. Once bud drop has started on a cactus, and this is the same thing that's true with orchids, and I mean, I can't really think of any plants where it's not true. Once the flower buds on these plants, once they start to shrivel or look like they're just going the opposite direction they should be basically, it's pretty much too late. The bud drop happens for, it can be several different reasons or just one, but it's pretty much always linked to just drastic change. Change in their growing environment, that is. So you pick one up from the store, it's got buds on it, you're excited, you bring it home, and oh, hey, I can't wait for it to flower, and then, it, nope, that doesn't happen for you. What's probably happened here is that the plant was shocked. It didn't like the change. Generally, it's the transition from the store to the home or from the grower to the store and then to the home. These plants, they go through a lot of steps before they make it into the home, right? They go from a, a grower, sometimes multiple growers, and then they go to the retailer and then they make it home. And by the time they make it to the home or office, wherever you're keeping your plant, that's been a lot of change. And the Christmas cactus, we know that they're not really Christmas cactus, but that's what we're gonna call it in this video, Christmas or Thanksgiving cactus. We typically only see these when they're budding and blooming, right? For, you don't see them very often throughout the rest of the year, spring, summer, not so much. They're mostly just in the stores during the fall time because the growers, the retailers, everybody makes the assumption that people are only going to want to buy the plants when they have flowers on them, which I would say isn't, too far off, right? It can be difficult to have these things mass produced and sell them when it's just the foliage. Not everybody is into the foliage on these plants. I think it looks really cool. I enjoy this plant when it's in flower or not in flower. They have really cool and interesting foliage, but it's still, sometimes it's just harder to sell plants when they're in flower. When they're in buds, like probably the worst time to be shipping them around and moving them. They're going all over the place. It's not just the steps like I talked about what it takes to get them into the house from the different growers to the retailer to home, but I mean, think about the different trucks, airplanes, packaging, like just the constant changes in environment. That's enough to make them go, hey, you know what? That's enough of this crap. I'm gonna drop these flowers hours off, I need to survive. It's just too much for them. The change in temperature, humidity, how they're being watered, those are all things that contribute to bud drop. Sometimes with orchids, it can be really risky just buying them during winter, depending on the variety. I mean, really for most varieties, if you live someplace that's really cold, simply taking them from inside the store through a parking lot out to the car in the cold can be enough to cause bud blast or bud drop in orchids. And the same thing's really true for these plants as well. It's kind of odd, right? You would think that these great big stores that don't have like a green house or anything to maintain grower-like conditions for these plants, you would assume that, oh, I just found there's a little snail on there. I've been battling the snails this year. You would assume that the plants would drop their buds when they're in the store. That aspect of it has always kind of puzzled me a little bit too, but I kind of figure at those stores, even if they're not in a greenhouse where they're getting a decent levels of humidity and just really overall good care, they're still usually grouped up with a lot of other plants and a lot of other plants do help create a little bit of a micro environment for humidity. So the stores just haven't had them in long enough for them to start dropping their buds. You know, they get them in, they look pretty, people buy them, take them home. They're probably only there for a week or so and that's potentially all it takes is that one week of time for them to start going, hey, I'm not happy. And I w I'm sorry that there's no solution to this. Once it's started, once that happens, it's done. But I still thought it was important to talk about why it happens. Like I said, it's generally just drastic change and the plant's not having it. They're not into it. And then what about preventing bud drop? Well, there's not a ton you can do other than making sure when you purchase the plant, 
if it's really hot outside or really cold, 60 to 80 degrees is kind of the sweet spot and the safe spot with these plants, which is kind of in the realm of indoor growing conditions, right? So maybe, I don't know, let's say you're at the store, you pick one up, it's 30 degrees outside, maybe ask for a couple extra bags to wrap around the entire plant while you rush it out to the car. And then the same thing to when you bring it in the house, don't put them in your trunk because there's no heat back there. Or, you know, same thing with air conditioning. If it's really hot where you live in the fall time, don't put them in your trunk where they're going to be really, really hot. You know, just avoid extremes. You want to keep things nice and stable. Consistency is key once they're in flower, once they're budding. When purchasing these at the store, sometimes you get little ones that are just kind of like in a little pot and that's oftentimes wrapped in some type of foil or mylar, usually decorative for the holidays. Feel the bottom of that. You can usually feel if there's water in there because those they don't drain. There's no holes in the bottoms of those little foil liners. If there's water in there, I would avoid buying that plant. I wouldn't get it just because it, it's sitting in water. They don't like that. So if you notice that the plant is really soggy and there's a lot of water in there, I wouldn't get it. It's just too risky. That's a general rule of thumb with succulents and cactus in general. If they're really wet at the store, probably shouldn't bring it home because it's already prone to rotting out and dying on you. I would much rather buy a cactus that's really dry over one that's really, really wet because I can bring it home and very, very slowly drip some water into that pot and water it. If they're in those foils, take them out or poke holes in the bottom of it so that the water can escape when you do water it. They're not a drought tolerant type cactus or succulent like you would have with say something like a Sansevieria, right? They don't need to be watered very often at all. Whereas these guys, they come from places where there's a heavy amount of precipitation. They're epiphytes. They need that humidity and moisture. Once you notice buds starting to go on these, it's too late. There's nothing you can do to stop it. However, don't be too discouraged because sometimes they will keep on blooming. Even though they've been stressed out from all the different changes and everything, depending on your environment, they probably need to be watered at least once a week as long as that soil drains really, really well. They need to be allowed to dry between waterings. You don't want them to sit around in moist, wet, soggy soil. That can cause bud drop too. The main thing is just Get it someplace where it's going to be happy and maintain consistency, and sometimes they will rebloom. It seems to be more true with some of the newer hybrids that are out there. I don't think they're hybridized to be continuous bloomers or anything like that. I think they're just sometimes more sturdy and resilient. I have another one of these that's way too big to get on this table. That one rarely repeat blooms. Last year, it put out just like a few extra flowers, probably in January, and that one's pretty old. I've had it for a really, really long time. I actually, I'm gonna go ahead and do a repot and a cut back on this one too, finally this year after it's done flowering, because it's time. They do like a compact pot, but not too much. And you can see on this one over here, this particular plant has a little fruit going on up here, and that's because it flowered over the summer. Very unexpected, but sometimes they'll do that. And that's not normal, that's very unusual, but something was going on during the summer that made it think that it needed to. These are plants that are triggered into flowering by a change, by multiple changes. Generally late summer, you wanna stop fertilizing them, move them someplace that's dark for at least like probably a good 12 to 14 hours a day. So if you're keeping it inside, you can put them in a closet or just, change them from their bright sunny window wherever you've been keeping them to maybe a darker corner. That's all it really takes. They don't have to go like pitch, pitch, pitch black, but if you have one that's really stubborn about blooming, then that might be the way to go with keeping it dark, 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 like super dark, put it in a closet, something like that. The only reason I bring that up is just to kind of talk about re-triggering them into blooming. So if they do drop their buds, keep the plant happy for I'd say at least, I don't know, a few weeks, three weeks to a month, and then you can try moving them back into a darker location and trying to re-trigger the flowering. And that's what they do with the growers too. You know, these are put into a dark place. They're triggered into blooming so they can all be shipped out. They end up receiving a special type of growing and a special type of treatment to get them into flowering. And then their growing conditions are changed completely. And sometimes it's just too much for them. There's a flaw in the system for sure, right? But what can we do about it? If you want to get them when they're in bud and in bloom, then that's just kind of the way they have to do it. And getting them when they're in flower is really nice though, right? Because you know what the plant's going to look like when you bring it home. You can always have labels with pictures on them, which is fantastic. And I wish growers would start doing that more with these schlumbageras instead of just 
throwing them in pots and saying, hey, it's a Christmas cactus or holiday cactus, whatever they decide to call it. And then you don't know what it's going to look like when it's not in flower. I went ahead and dropped my exposure down so we can kind of see the flowers a little bit better here on this one. Things were a little bit bright and intense, so there's a better look at that just in case it's been a little bit too overexposed throughout the video. So while you can attempt to re-trigger them to bloom, sometimes they'll go ahead and start to set out more and more buds. These don't flower all at one time. So while all these flowers that you see down here are nice and open, there's still lots of other little buds up here that are developing on the plant. You can see those teeny tiny little pink dots up there and then larger buds. And what's nice about that is you get a succession of flowers on these plants. They'll just keep blooming for a while. So it's possible if you bring one of these home and it starts to drop its buds, its larger buds, go ahead, just, you know, stay positive. Do your best to take good care of them. Don't rush to be fertilizing them or anything like that just because that's still a drastic change. And uh, maybe uh, some more tiny little buds will start to show up on the plants. Maybe. And typically the time to prune these plants back if you want them to branch out and be a little bit more bushy, usually that pruning would be done uh, right after they're done flowering. I usually just cut about two to three of these pads off the plant, which is roughly a, roughly? <laughs> That's roughly a 40 to 50% prune. I don't do this every year. I probably do it every two years with these and that can help make them more bushy. What happens is they start to spread out and there's a big open spot in the middle because they're getting really long, they're pulling down, that's when I go ahead and prune them back. And the only reason I mention that is because perhaps you've been reading about how to take care of these and then you see, okay, well, when they're done flowering, that's a good time to prune them. But if you uh, have bud drop and you want them to keep flowering, you're hoping that maybe they'll bloom again for you, hold off on the pruning because these bloom on old growth. So if you prune it back, it's going to put out new growth, but that growth isn't going to bloom until next year. Again, avoid extreme changes. A big prune, that would be an extreme change. They don't want it. Not if you want them to flower, that is. Giving them that prune is totally an acceptable and fine thing to do. However, once they are done flowering, there's nothing wrong with it. It'll just make them a little bit more bushy and full. They'll put out more growth and just kind of look like a bigger, happier plant. And don't be hard on yourself. If you bought one of these and it dropped its flowers, then that doesn't necessarily mean you did anything wrong. It's just a lot of change between going from a grower to the home. Sometimes that's all it takes. Sometimes you didn't do anything wrong. Sometimes it's just because whoever had the plant before you really sucked at growing them. And I think it's a fair assumption by most people who are newer to plants to just think if you're buying a plant from a store that's selling the plants and the people who are selling those plants know how to care for the plants. Yes, no. Maybe, right? I, that's what I assume. So if I'm buying a plant and then I bring it home and it, I realize, oh my gosh, there's all these things wrong with it. I'm going to be mad at myself personally because I've been doing this for a while. I should know better. But somebody who's new to gardening, new to plants, don't be hard on yourself. That's on wherever you bought it from, not necessarily on you. What I'm getting at is save your receipt. Bought one of these from a big box stores and it does drop its flowers and maybe you can get a new one. See if you can take it back, swap it out, exchange it. Go back, see if they have any others that are looking nice to you. Make sure, like I said, they're not sitting in water. The pots aren't sopping wet. Also, I mean, they shouldn't really be bone dry either, but that's probably a safer way to go. But like I mentioned before, when you bring it home, water it slowly. Don't just drown it with water to rehydrate it. Reintroduce it to having some moisture in a calm fashion. These are some of, if not my favorite, succulents to grow, cactus to grow. They just look neat all year, whether they have flowers on them or not. With really great color and just interest in texture, they're great plants. And that's why a lot of people buy them. Hopefully something I said in here was helpful, but it's unfortunate that I can't give a solution to the problem other than how to avoid it happening. That's really about it. And then like maybe getting it to bloom again or just being patient maybe it still has blooming to do maybe it hasn't put out all of its buds yet but if some of your experience has been with these plants i hear from a lot of people that theirs will sometimes not bloom for years and then they just will bloom for sometimes a couple of months i had one last year like i mentioned that just bloomed and bloomed and bloomed and bloomed and bloomed anyways fantastic plants i love them i'm sorry if you're one of those people who bought one and the buds dropped off that sucks hopefully it'll put out some new buds and keep going for you this one right here i i wanted to make this video a couple weeks ago because this particular 
holiday cactus. I'm trying to call it holiday cactus for the people who aren't in the U.S. and don't have Thanksgiving because then I have people jump down my throat going, don't you know everybody doesn't celebrate Thanksgiving? I know. Sorry about it. It's just the common name. Anyways, let's not go into that little rant. This particular plant has beautiful flowers on it. I was hoping it would be in bloom for this video, but the clock's ticking. People are buying these plants. So I was like, I'm just going to go ahead and make the video. And then when those buds do pop open, which will probably just be a couple days from now, I'll be sure to go ahead and post that up on my social media. I'm on Instagram more than anything else. I have all that. Whoa. <laughs> I have all that linked down below in the description of the video. All my social media is down there. If you do the whole YouTube thing, give the video a thumbs up. It makes a big difference for the videos and for the channel. I really do appreciate it. And if you haven't already and you'd like to, you can hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. That way you know when new videos come out. All right, I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.